the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To welcome everyone as we gather on this special occasion of the St. Thomas More Lecture, the New Society occasion, in which we remember uh, at this Mass the example given to us by our patron, St. Thomas More. And so as we enter into this celebration of the Mass, let's call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who in martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression, graciously grant that strengthened through the intercession of St. Thomas More, we may confirm by the witness of our life the faith we profess with our lips. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. Eleazar, one of the foremost teachers of the law, a man already advanced in years and of most noble appearance, was being forced to open his mouth wide to swallow pig's flesh. Those in charge of the impious banquet, because of their long-standing friendship with him, took him aside and privately urged him to have meat brought of a kind he could properly use prepared by himself, and only pretend to eat the portions of sacrificial meat as prescribed by the king. Such pretense, he said, does not square with our time of life. Many young people were supposed that Eleazar, at the age of 90, had conformed to the foreigner's way of life. And because I had played this part for the sake of a paltry brief spell of life, might themselves be led astray on my account. I should only bring defilement and disgrace on my old age. Even though for the moment I avoid execution by man, I can never, living or dead, elude the grasp of the Almighty. Therefore, if I am man enough to quit this life here and now, I shall prove myself worthy of my old age, and I shall have left the young and noble example of how to make a good death eagerly and generously for the venerable and holy laws. With these words, he went straight to the block. His escorts, so recently well disposed towards him, turned against him after this declaration, which they regarded as sheer madness. Just before he died under the blows, he groaned aloud and said, the Lord whose knowledge is holy sees clearly that though I might have escaped death, whatever agonies of body I now endure under this bludgeoning in my soul, I am glad to suffer because of the awe which he inspires in me. This was how he died, leaving his faith as an example of nobility and a record of virtue, not only for the young, but for the great majority of the nation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And be with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. said to his disciples, take care, but no one deceives you, because many will come using my name and saying, I am the Christ, and they will deceive many. This is, you will hear the wars and rumors of wars. Do not be alarmed, for this is something that must happen, but the end will not be yet. A nation will fight against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes here and there. All this is only the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and put to death. And you will be hated by all the nations on account of my name. And then many will fall away. You will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise. They will deceive many and with the increase of lawlessness love in most people will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. thought of St. Thomas More when we watched here at the chaplaincy the film A Hidden Life, the story of Franz Jagerstatter, an Austrian who refused to take an oath of allegiance to Hitler and to serve in the German army in the Second World War. I thought of him after watching Silence, a fictional account of the persecution suffered by the Catholic community in the late 16th century Japan resulting in Jesuit priests faced with execution, publicly renouncing their faith and assimilating into the culture and practices of Japanese society. The moral landscape encountered in these narratives is complex. Can we remain true to ourselves and what we believe when we express under constraint assent to something we do not believe? Our actions, too, of course, can be expressions of compliance. And all this acutely problematic when the consequence of withholding consent, of opposing what is demanded of us, is to lose our life. None of us can foresee what witness we will need to give to our faith in the course of our life, nor what that witness might cost us. We will all feel at times mired by the world, compromised in different ways. That's part of the human predicament that members of the church have known down the ages. What we might pray for is the grace of knowing, like Eliezer, where the line must be drawn, where we need to take a stand, both for our own integrity, but also for the witness to the truth that our actions will give to others. It would certainly be a special grace to be like Eliezer, an example of nobility to some, if not, as in his case, to the great majority of the nation. If we are to be capable of this, we need not just to be against something, but for something, actively and engagedly for that life of love that Christ foresees grows cold when people draw back in times of persecution. If we do not exercise ourselves in that life of love, in that discipleship of Christ, we will never know when or where we need to take a stand. We honor St. Thomas More as a martyr, but his martyrdom is to be seen in continuity with the rest of his life, with his brave and principled engagement in public life, with his creative engagement in scholarship and the promotion of Christian humanism, 
by his support and defence of the church, by his love and care for his family. He was a man, of course, of his times, a saint, but not perfect. He knew how much he was in need of the Lord's mercy. We can make our own one of his most fervent prayers. Give me, good Lord, a full faith, a firm hope, and a fervent charity, a love to the good Lord incomparable above the love to myself, and that I love nothing to thy displeasure, but everything in an order to thee.
pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, your Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his, glory of his name, for our, our good, good and good of all his holy, 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 holy Church. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring on this occasion of the celebration of the martyr St. Thomas More, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Thomas, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. You, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable 
so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to you your glorious, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to, to, to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who thought through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship in your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not wearing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these things, all these good things, O Lord, and sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body and blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. A prayer of spiritual communion for those joining us live streamed. And Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things. I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. In crucial attempt, 
Let us pray. Renew us, Lord, we pray, with the food from heaven, and strengthen us by the example of prayers of your martyr, St. Thomas More, so that always following the voice of conscience, we may be ever your good servants, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.